Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can change your microscope setup to change the image quality from this to this. So a while back you might recall I made this microscope illuminator for my microscope and I did a whole series of videos on these. This is probably the brightest illuminator in the world for this type of microscope. Uh, it's made from four Cree XHP 50 LEDs and yeah as I say it can produce extremely high brightness levels directed onto the PCB and this is important especially when using a camera on the microscope because at very deep zooms you actually lose quite a lot of light because the area that you're focusing on is extremely small. So this overcomes that and with the camera that I've got I get really good image quality. However one of the problems that I notice when using this is I can't actually read the legend on any of these ICs very well. Looking under the microscope you can see, although we can see this diode quite clearly, we can also obviously see the resistor values quite clearly. You can't read the number on this IC and you can't read the number on this SOT23 part over here. However if we provide a little bit of shade then it starts to become a little bit clearer. So I think really what we've got is an issue with glare on this design. So what we're going to do today is print some 3D parts that are going to clip onto these LEDs rather than disassemble this and uh, make whole new parts here. I'm going to attempt to print some parts that will clip over here that will allow us to hold some polarizing filters and that way we can polarize the light coming out of these LEDs in one direction and then by fitting another lens onto the microscope that we can rotate we can then adjust the polarization of that and hopefully reduce the glare from the PCBs. And incidentally these are some PCBs that I've had made at JLC PCB using the SMT assembly service and these are some constant current LED drivers and now they have significantly more components available for use on the SMT assembly service. So I've been able to get this entire PCB populated whereas previously it was quite difficult to get hold of some of these parts. So if you are thinking about getting some PCBs assembled at JLC PCB don't forget to visit them in the link in the description down below. So I've quickly modelled up a part in FreeCAD. This will clip over each of the existing LED illuminators. We've got the hole in the bottom for the light to come out, but we're going to place a polarising filter on this surface here before we clip it into place. So we've got a brand new printer in the lab today to print these parts on. This was sent to me by Geetech the other day. This is the Geetech Mizar S. This is an altogether new model and it has quite a few improvements over the previous generation of printers. Now I did have the A20M previously which was a dual filament printer but that one did cause me a few problems. First of all I found that the extrusion head did occasionally clog up and that was reported quite a lot with the dual filament model so I think that's probably exclusive to that. Uh, but also what I did find is the retraction settings on the A20M didn't work that well and the setup on that one was the filament, well there were two filament reels at the top with, an uh, with a feeder directly attached to them and then a very long tube down to the print head and I think what was happening is probably the filament was stretching a little bit but I never really got brilliant print quality unless I slowed down the print considerably. Now on this model they put the feeder on the z-axis uh, so we've got a very short tube here between the feeder and the extrusion head similar to the Ender 3 so I think that should resolve that issue. The other thing is they've improved the stepper motor drivers so this one should be a lot quieter. The other one was quite noisy uh, and in fact you could hear it in the other room but it was very quick at moving the motors around. They've also gone for a dual motor design on the z-axis so there's two lead screws at the back here and a stepper motor at the bottom of each. That should stop the z-axis from tilting from one side to the other so it should improve the stability uh, and obviously they've also improved the design of it and it's got a nice uh, looking interface at the front here. So I'm going to get this set up and then we'll try and print these parts. So I was just about to turn on this printer for the very first time to start doing the bed leveling. Now what you'd normally do is some kind of manual leveling first. So underneath these is normally four adjustment wheels, one in each corner like on the Ender 3 here. And the idea is that you get the bed as flat as possible first of all and then if the printer is fitted with any kind of self-leveling you're then only making very minor corrections to the bed. But this one is completely fixed to the carriage underneath so there's no manual adjustments whatsoever on this printer. So we're relying entirely on the feedback from uh, the z-axis to actually give us a flat bed. So let's turn it on for the first time 
and see what happens. Okay, so it's quick to boot up and we want to do the auto leveling. So we go to tool, auto level. Now it just says do the following uh, back. So I guess it's this one. Please use a tool to gently push the nozzle upward from the bottom of the nozzle to complete the leveling sensor calibration. Calibration failed. Uh, so I think it wants us to push the nozzle upwards. So let's have a look. So I'm going to press it up with the spanner. There we go. It says leveling complete. And now it's waiting for temperature. So it's going to increase the nozzle and the heat bed temperature. And then it looks like it's going to do the auto leveling. So those printed really nicely, really good print quality as you can see, uh, basically no defects on there. Now this was all with the automatic setup, so the automatic bed levelling, there were basically no manual steps there. And I did print a calibration cube, the Y axis looks really good, as does the Z. Uh, there's probably just a little bit of tweaking we could do on the X axis just to get rid of those um, little defects on this side here. But generally speaking, that was a very simple printer to get up and running with minimal effort really. And it's also really quiet. So I did like that the motors are basically silent. There is a fan, I think in the power supply that you can occasionally hear, uh, but it's not too loud at all. So really quite a nice printer. So next we need to talk about polarizing filters. So this is the one that I picked up off eBay to go on the bottom of my Amscope microscope. It's 48 millimeter in diameter and it's got a threaded part at the bottom here. So this literally just screws into the bottom of the objective lens at the bottom of the microscope. Uh, this one is made in Japan. And when that's screwed in, basically there's this bottom section here that you can rotate to adjust the orientation of the polarizing filter here. Now you can get a whole array of different types of polarizing filters. Uh, for now, it was very cheap. I managed to find some polarizing filter. I think this is designed for an iPhone. I'm not sure how effective this one is going to be. It seems to have a weird green pink tinge as you rotate uh, this lens around, but it does appear to block out some of the light. So we'll try this one out first. We may need to adjust this filter for something else. And you can spend a lot of money on polarizing filters. They come in, you know, flexible varieties like this, but you can also get glass ones. And I had a quick look at, I think, Edmund Optics, and they wanted like £200 per filter if I was to get it made to this size. Um, so I, I thought I'd start with the cheap option first. Um, there may be some other films that might work better, but I think this one is the type that absorbs the light that isn't polarised. So this may not work very well for our high power LEDs. Uh, it may end up bleaching this filter. There are other types that reflect the light back, um, but we'll see how this goes because this was relatively inexpensive. And all we need to do is cut out some squares here to fit in the bottom of these mounts. And the important thing is to ensure that we get the orientation correct because we've got four LEDs here and we probably want the polarizing filters all to be pointing in this direction so the light all hits the PCB in the same direction and then we can adjust the polarization uh, with this on the bottom of the microscope. Right, so that's the filters in place and I put some orientation arrows in so I make sure I get them correct but you can see here as we rotate that polarization is working quite nicely. So let's try and clip this 
onto the illuminator. So we'll start with this one. There we go, so that's the first one. So as you can see, those clip around nicely onto the LED mounts here. Now, if this all works, I may end up coming up with a slightly different arrangement. But to test out this, we've got the filters in place over the LED lenses. Uh, so let's see if it works. So here we are with just the polarizing filter on the LEDs, nothing on the microscope yet. And you can see we're still having trouble reading the numbers on these ICs. So now let's put the polarizing filter on the microscope. Right, so the polarizing filter is now on the microscope as well. So let's rotate it and see how that changes the image. And at around that point there, we can see all of the detail really, really clearly. The PCB itself has gone quite dull, but we can now see all of the text on the PCB really brightly. And then it goes sort of back to normal. So somewhere around here looks to be a really good place to have it so that when we're looking at PCBs, we get really good contrast. And through the eyepieces, we see the same type of image. So it's very, very crystal clear now. When I'm looking through the microscope, I can see everything in a lot of detail. And on other PCBs, we get pretty much the same result. So it's a little bit glary here, and then we rotate the filter, and then we can see everything with a huge amount of contrast here. And once again, on another PCB, you can see that great contrast, and now we're getting rid of any reflections that we'd normally see. And you can especially see it on the solder joints, where normally, if I adjust it, we'd get quite a lot of glare like this and that may wash out parts of the picture or may just not allow us to inspect the solder joints very well. So now as we adjust the polarizing filters, we can view them in quite a lot of detail there. And in fact, if we look at some solder joints here, we can see the reflection of the four LEDs. If I cover one up, you can see disappear. And as we adjust the polarization ring, we get very differing image qualities and then all of a sudden the LEDs basically disappear from the reflection and back again as we go the other way. And so when we're doing some of our soldering videos, this is how it would normally look, I think. And we probably want to adjust it to somewhere in the middle here that gives us a lot more detail of what's going on with the solder. If we go too far, I think it just looks a little bit too alien and we can't really see the detail. But somewhere around this point here, and we can see quite a lot of detail and see exactly what's going on. So that seems to work really nicely in terms of the effect on the PCB. The longer term question is going to be how well these filters hold up because we're basically blocking about 50% of the light from these LEDs. It's only allowing light in one polarization to come from it and the rest is basically being absorbed by the filter itself. Now you can get dichroic lenses that reflect the light back to the source uh, but they generally are quite expensive. So what I first of all, we'll see how well this holds up. But then I'd like to try and find a source of maybe a glass dichroic polarization filter for each of these LEDs. Um, from the optic suppliers, they want hundreds of pounds for each of these lenses, which is a lot of money. The filters used on cameras and on this microscope, they're inexpensive because they're used in quite high volume. So people buy them for photography all the time. So that one was pretty cheap, but I can't seem to find anything in this small diameter and I really don't want to try and fit a 47 millimeter lens in front of these LEDs so I'm going to have to have a scout around and see if I can find anything suitable but in the meantime I'm going to carry on using this and see how long it lasts before these filters need replacing because I think that filter film that I used was only about three pound for two sheets which is pretty inexpensive and if it lasts a year that's probably good enough. So anyway, that's a little idea for you to use if you have a microscope illuminator. Even if you're using one of the round ring lights, uh, you could cut it into a circle. Make sure you've got the opening in the center for your microscope clear. And then you just add in another polarizing lens to your microscope and you can get the same effect as me. So I hope you found the video useful. A big thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video and also providing the PCBs that we've used in these various designs. Uh, if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.